Well, after a one-week hiatus, we're back with Chalk Talk, and this was a really cool play. Probably one of my favorite plays I've studied in a little while, and this was the culmination of the eight-and-a-half-minute drive in the second quarter where the Seahawks tie it up at 14-14. This is rushing touchdown number two of Marshawn's four, and there's so many components of this down near the goal line that I really, really like, and I'm not going to back away. I never will from Players Formations Plays. We'll call it PFP, Players Formations Plays, and in this case, really the player to highlight is Gary Gilliam, who's come in as their second tight end, their blocking tight end with the loss of Luke Wilson. Uh, and remember, Gilliam was a tight end at Penn State, very natural in a lot of his motions and his movements and his blockings. He did this for four years at Penn State, so very comfortable in this role. And this play, more than anything else, puts this player at nearly 300 pounds in a position to wash down the edge and give Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch a real opportunity to run their zone read. Uh, what else is cool is Marshawn actually starts this, um, this whole play to the left of Russell Wilson, which sets a formation, and then you will see him come back to this spot, and you can see the middle linebacker and that whole Giants team barking it out. Why did they want him over? Well, they didn't want to start him here on the same side as Gilliam and allow these linebackers to maybe make a call, to influence, to shift, and say, hold on a second, Marshawn, Gilliam on the same side, that heavy package. No, they, they, they waited to shift him uh, late in the, in the formation and in the play because they knew, they being the Seahawks, the Cooper Helfit strengths are what? His strengths are down the field as a receiver. His strengths are not going to be to wash down and end like Gary Gilliam's, cap Gary Gilliam's capable of doing. So we're going to run this away, but we're going to do it quickly. We're not going to give the Giants a whole lot of time to reset their own formation. So players, put your big 300-pound blocking tight end in position to be real effective. Formations, yeah, we're going to shift Marshawn over late in this call, not allow the New York Giants to reconfigure uh, their line and their formation. And then ultimately the play, that zone read that's been really, really effective and was in this game. And everybody does a tremendous job. Lots of blocking. Everybody washes down. Actually, Okung leaves this end, giving Cooper a chance to get out onto the safety he's capable of doing. You take everybody out of the play. And then the big block really becomes, everyone's got good angles, the big block really becomes Gilliam's ability on that edge player to, as I said, wash him down and move him down. And in particular, watch his head placement. Watch his hand placement. Watch his comfort level, really, and all those attention to details on that block, because this is a critical block. If we, if he wins here as he does, and he wins at that point, then it becomes a two-on-one, and you're putting Antrell Roll in a very difficult position. Everybody else has good angles, Gilliam does his job, and then you see these two do their magic, and I thought one of their better mesh points, they're riding that fake, riding that fake, and you can see it, the longer they're in that mesh, riding that fake, you see the more challenging it is for Roll, he hesitates, he's ultimately in a no-win situation, and Marshawn basically walks it in. Players put him in the best position to have success. Formations don't allow the New York Giants to reset their own defensive formation and then ultimately run that zone replay with these two gaining real comfort in one another and keeping that ball right in the belly of Lynch and allow your beast mode to finish as he did oh so well.